I'm going to look at the material manager down the bottom here. Now there's a whole host of functions, but if you go to create, you can see we have quite a few different types of material that I can create, and that's ignoring the, the redshift materials that I have in a drop down here. So under the materials, we've got PBRs and standard and nodes and Ubers, grass, aerial, pyrocluster, for those of those that remember that, shadow catcher and sketch. The sketch material is a really cool sketch and tune thing, which sadly we don't get a chance to look at, but have a play with it. It's quite fun. The two that we're going to be looking at mainly are the standard material and we'll have a look at a PBR material workflow shortly. So let's just create a new standard material. There is also a shortcut for doing that, which is if you noticed earlier, just double click with your mouse in the material manager here, or there's a plus button there, which I forget about because that's only been here in like the last version. Then you will see that your material pops up in the right hand side um, attribute manager. I am definitely old school. I will double click the material and that brings up my individual material editor, which you can see is a little bit different and has, I think personally, easier access to this. Certainly if I'm going to give some form of demonstration, I'd like to be able to show them all at once. We have the color channel. This color channel, funny enough, allows you to change the color of the object that you have in question. This is the material. So just like before, I can click and I can drag, I can change that, I can change the brightness, which is very similar to intensity, um, which I can also over increase, but I'm just going to keep that at 100. Um, and you can change the material. If you want a color wheel, you can click the color wheel. If you want the color square, you can click that one instead, the spectrum. Um, which is quite nice, and you can change the color of your object. You can also, if you want to, use an image as a texture for your object. So if you had a scene set up and you had a television screen or pictures or paintings and things like that on your walls, then you could load up those materials in here, either with the load image, pressing this big empty bar, or the three dots. You can choose an image. Do I have anything on my desktop? I have a training image somewhere. Do I have a picture? I have a screenshot. How exciting. Um, displacement map. Um, test PNG. There you go. I can click open. Yes. Um, and it will appear as an image on my object. Cinema 4D will also allow you to use images, uh, image sequences, sorry, and videos as textures. So if you had an animation and there was a television screen in it, then you could actually have a television animation apply itself to as a texture to the screen so it would play through your animation. If you no longer want your texture there, you can just drop down and do clear and that will get rid of it and then you are back to the standard material that you had before. Diffusion, I'm simply not going to cover with this because of time allowances. Luminance, which you've seen before, that allows you to put a tick in the box and control how luminant your object is. This is the amount of brightness data that you can make it emit as part of a uh, global illumination workflow or how an object looks like it is being illuminated from the inside. So there's a couple of different uses for that one. Transparency, we will definitely look at in a bit, but funnily enough, it makes things look transparent. Reflectance is something that allows you to control by default the specular of an object, and that is how shiny something is. This is all part of a standard workflow. We will look at a physically accurate workflow shortly, which is a different thing. So I can control the width and height. Uh, sorry, that's not that. Width and strength of my specular. And you can see that the width is how far across an object it spreads and the strength is how strong it is. So this controls how shiny an object is. Again, this is a standard renderer workflow. We will move on from that shortly. Environment, I'm going to skip. Fog, I'm going to skip. Bump allows you to make stuff bumpy. Bump means that you create some form of map, funnily enough, a bump map, which is a grayscale image which allows you to make something look bumpy. So I'm going to use my drop down 
And the easiest grayscale map that I can use to create very quickly is a noise map. You can see very fast that it looks bumpy. Now, I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to drag and drop my material to it and then I'm going to render. And you will notice bump is a lie like the cake. Uh, the bump is a lie because if you look at the outer line of my sphere, it is not actually changed the surface. It is still a perfect sphere. It's very useful for adding bumps and scratches and things on that that give the effect of it being bumpy without actually needing to physically change the geometry. You can physically change the geometry with a displacement map, but we're not going to go into that at this point. Glow does exactly what it says on the tin and adds a glow around the outside. Um, it's a little bit cheesy, but it is incredibly useful for making neon signs, as you will find out. The alpha channel allows you to add an image into your textures here and literally take away information. So rather than make it transparent like a window, which is glass that you can see through, this allows you to take information away like a wire net or a gauze or something like that no longer requires that the actual physical model to be there anymore and as a very quick demonstration i'm going to use my drop down i'm going to go to my surfaces and then i'm going to create a checkerboard material and you can see that that will create my checkerboard i need to put a tick in my box for my alpha and now i have a checkerboard material being created and bits of my sphere are visible and others aren't they're not transparent they're simply not there normal map is a kind of bump map and reflection that, that works its way off three different degrees of reflection information and is mainly used in gaming particularly for getting a lot of information to do with bumps and informations onto very low polygon models which is why gaming uses it an awful lot Okay, that is a kind of rough understanding of materials um, for the standard workflow. Again, Ellie will go through a lot more information about what each channel does when they're going to talk about the actual making of individual materials. There is a difference between our two renderers that come with Cinema 4D, and I'm just gonna look at my render settings here. We have a standard renderer and we have a physical renderer. Now, physical is designed to be more physically accurate. Very tiny history lesson. When Cinema 4D was created, we had one renderer and that was the standard renderer. Um, as of course, 3D programs were new and everybody was writing them and trying to figure out how on earth they worked, then the standard renderer just sort of evolved and grew and, and moved on to different things. When computers became better and expectations of 3D increased, we needed to create a new form of renderer that was more physically accurate, and that was the physical renderer. Now, the physical renderer has different render settings, and again, we'll look at those in another session. But if you are going to be using the physical renderer for more phys physically accurate rendering, photorealism and things like that, you need to change your workflow. So I'm going to take my material and delete it and I'm going to create a new one. Now I could create a PBR material, but I'm not going to. I'm going to create a standard material again. And what you do with your standard material, we load it up, we turn off the color channel. This is going to sound very strange, but the color isn't real um, in a physically accurate world. Color is what is light bouncing off of an object in real life life reflects light back to things and the light that reflects back is the color that we see the rest of it is absorbed so when using physically accurate rendering you want to turn off color and avoid using it as much as you can we will do a lot of things for physically accurate rendering in the reflectance channel the first thing you should also do in the reflectance channel is delete the specular because this too is a lie. The specular again was old school. What do thing? What do people need to change when dealing with 
properties of objects. So we had two different things, reflex, reflection and specular. And then when dealing with physically accurate stuff, we realized that neither of those two are actually real things. And technically you have a reflectance layer. This is everything in the world is reflective. So everything must reflect because it reflects light. But the surfaces are either incredibly rough and therefore you get a very matte reflection like tables and rubbers and skin or you get a very shiny you get a very smooth surface so you get things like mirrors and metals and plastics and so on and so forth they require different um reflection algorithms to be created so the first thing you do is you delete your specular because it is a lie specular isn't real and we click the add button and you can see we've got quite a lot of things that we could add we're not going to go through all of them don't worry we'll be here forever um, your main reflection layers exist here and they are beckman ggx fong and ward which you've got i don't need to explain everyone knows what they mean so let's just create a Beckman. And if you want to know what they all do, the best thing that you can do is right click on type and go show help. And this will take you to a document in our help file, which goes into incredible detail about the differences between the different types and the different settings that you can get. Um, but if you're interested in the main differences between GGX, Bexman, Fong and Ward, here is a game I like to call Spot the Difference but you will see there are subtle differences between some of them. But if you really want to know what you should do, this is the bit that you should read. Or in summary, for plastics and pretty much everything in the world, use Beckman. For metals, use GGX. For physical and for skin and rubber and soft stuff, use Ward. It doesn't even talk about foam much here. Um, but you can see the difference is very thin. However, if you're going to use Beckman, it's for plastics and pretty much everything, GGX, metals, ward, rubber and skin. So just remember that. So we add our Beckman reflection layer, so for a plastics. Of course, this adds a reflection layer all the way around, which is a bit much for us sometimes because there's something else that isn't turned on by default. And that is something called a Fresnel. And a Fresnel exists down here. And we have a layer Fresnel. And at the moment, it is off. Now, a Fresnel is based on the principle that, and this is an interesting one, everything is reflective at 90 degrees. Um, so you will notice that if you have a reflective floor, if you start to creep down so that it, you are almost 90 degrees, as flat to the floor that you will get, you will see that it is much shinier, much more reflective than it was when you were looking at it at a different angle. This is one of the principles that causes um, mirages in deserts because you are actually able to see light reflecting off of something 90 degrees because of the way light bounces off of sand dunes. So when you think you're seeing water in, you know, on the floor of a desert, you're actually seeing the sky 90 degrees above it because that's the way light reflects. There's the science lesson for you. So the thing that we need to remember in 3D is that we need to turn it on so that it doesn't do anything. And we have none on by default. And then we have two different types, dielectric and conductor. Non-metal, metal. That's pretty much the way you differentiate the two. Conductors conduct metal or metals are conductors. So if it's metal you're trying to create, you put it as a conductor. If you're going to do plastics like we're about to do, you turn on dielectric. And you can see that I have a dark sphere now. So I have a reflection material going all the way around, but I have nothing underneath it. I need to create another new material. And this is my diffuse. This is my, for want of a better word, color. This is the underlying surface that will bounce back the light. And I'm just going to use a Lambertian. And I need to make sure that this is underneath my reflection layer. So I'm going to click and drag that underneath and you can see that I now have a white material ish with a reflective layer over the top and this is where I would do the majority of my color stuff so if I want to change the color of my object then I would do that here under my diffuse layer 
and my reflection layer over the top where I could increase this roughness and strength. And they are the two things that I would generally change and play with there. And just for those of you who are really curious, if I was to go to create materials, new PBR material, and let's have a look at that one, you would see that by default, the color channel is off, the reflectance channel is on, and I have my diffuse and my reflection there. But I wanted to show you how you can create your own and how you can create a material that is used or can be used between the two.